So, today we will start on fixed offshore platforms. Now, these are typical actually civil engineering structures. Okay. So, uh, your uh, the naval architects will be a little bit uh, they will require more knowledge in this area. So, uh, here actually what I wanted to tell you is before you go to the structural design aspect, there are certain other aspects which you should know which influence the structural design. So, first is <coughs> Number one that I have already talked about is the design spiral. So, these are actually uh, specialized uh, uh, structures as you know. So, they are not, uh, they are fixed structures and they do not have any ship shape form. So, these are the peculiar characteristics of these structures. And the other, so number one is absence of ships shaped form. So, this is uh, one characteristic now ship shaped form with which you are already familiar that is it is the ships are normally symmetric about the center, the center line or uh, these things. Now, here actually that center line concept is not there. Now, uh, so, the uh, instead of the ship shaped form, you have uh, more uh, the uh, geometry is more uh, truss shaped, it is conical, etcetera, and all this shape. So, th that is number one. Number two is now because of the ship shaped form, you have all the characteristics related to the form is uh, that is your resistance is less and all these things are there. But you will have in the fixed offshore platform when you are towing, you will have a lot of trouble because of the structure itself. So, the anyway, so that you will kind of learn in the towing aspect. So, number two is the major problem that we will encounter is uh, fixity with seabed. So, this is uh, the major point of departure from your uh, ships that is the seabed is your foundation. So, here actually the concept of uh, what you have learned that is in ships your buoyancy and stability is not that paramount is not it. So, you have to study the foundation mechanics. So, from here actually if you want to study the reaction. So, uh, in case of ships actually the support is coming from the what from the buoyancy buoyancy is supporting the weight. Now, here actually the foundation is your soil. So, unless you have a sufficient knowledge of the soil characteristics. So, soil mechanics is the major consideration for your uh, the what uh, supporting forces and moment. So, from here you calculate support forces and moments. So, this is another area which is a departure from your normal the um, ship shaped calculations. Now, if you want to do this, now in the soil actually you should know there are um, a number of characteristics what is the most important is your the um, cohesive strength and the bearing strength. So, these are the uh, uh, aspects which is found from lab experiments that is called. So, when I discuss about pile cohesive strength, then you have bearing strength. And you also may have another characteristic which is called shear strength. So, soil actually the behavior of soil is different from the behavior of water. Mm. So, whenever dealing with water, what are the forces? The water actually is, so when ships that is water there are two categories of forces which have more uh, which we study in our naval architecture. One is what? One is forces coming from hydrostatics and the other is the forces coming from the waves. These are the two major forces in your study of ships hydrodynamics, but in this case this 
these for the foundation your fixed structure these forces are important hydrostatics is of course important because the tall structure you know the base you have lot of hydrostatic forces and also hydrodynamics coming from waves so remember in, in case of the fixed structure so the environment for the number of forces the is more complex than your ships because it is coming from these three categories also from the soil foundation so here actually the trouble starts so you have to be more cautious when you are designing this kind of uh, platform because uh, since uh, this is fixed to the ground so ground motions or ground displacements will cause lot of damage to the structure so yeah uh, here the most important uh, beyond the <coughs> study of these hydrostatics hydrodynamics cohesive strength the other studies is uh, number 3 uh, you write ground motions so if you are uh, designing a uh, fixed structure that is your jackets jacket platforms so we are studying a fixed structure so normally the first category you will be your uh, fixed jackets the other type of uh, structure that is uh, you will come in the normally in the fixed category uh, is called uh, uh, the uh, what is called your uh, jack jackups jackups have uh, connectivity on the seabed they rest on the seabed and also your jackets but jackups are not pile driven there is a major difference is not pile driven so the foundation is not pile based but here you have fixed is piles here to study lot of pile mechanics if you want to study the foundation so this is actually your foundation so this uh, the you have to find out the forces and moments for these two types of platforms so number 3 that is is your ground motions is critical so this is ground motions caused by earthquakes so this we will study in your that offshore technology class uh, this is uh, caused by earthquakes so we will study all this so this the i'll tell you what are the forces that you have to consider in case of jacket platforms anyway so this is the uh, gist and uh, so your design spider now what you do when you have started your uh, platform design now uh, any design is first you start from um, this owner specification if you want to make a design spiral owner specification is the first starting point now owner specification or uh, uh, sometimes they call it uh, client requirement or owners requirement sometimes is owners requirement so the owners is also a very knowledgeable person in this field so that is taken for granted and uh, the contractor or the uh, vendor of the platform he has to correspond with the owners now here before you embark on this project that is your you have to do what is called a field development study what is this field development now any ship that you are designing or whether it is a cargo ship container ship or any ship they are built on certain Uh, design requirement or owner's requirement. Say a tanker, the owner specified that you have to carry so much of volume, dead weight of crude oil from this place to this place at a certain speed. <coughs> But this, how you start your design? 
So, this you have to start from the oil field development, field means your oil field. What strategy you adopt for development of oil field? Now, this is a very specialized area, this is beyond the scope of study of your naval architecture. So, but the uh, you have to interact uh, with this kind of situation. So, oil field development, now here there are two aspects, one is you formulate this uh, oil field development design spiral. So, here also you have to make a design spiral. Now, design actually is a very complex study, you know, it is just not one off design, you just make a one off table, but that is not the case. Now, this is one design spiral which you have to formulate. Next is you come to the platform. Here also you make another design spiral. Uh, this actually is more the platform one is more of the ship shaped uh, the ship design spiral. And in, in your say we your design ship design class, I think Professor Shah will be talking about this. Here also you have to formulate another design spiral before you finalize the design of the uh, platform. So, here actually the I told you uh, uh, the problem is more complex than ships. So, here actually this one study should be uh, you should do this study and uh, number 2 is this study and then you have to link these two. You have to formulate another design spiral which will have these two spirals you see. So, it is quite complex. Now, uh, the uh, this field development concept there are a lot of uh, uh, one example I can give you. So, here you have uh, field study you start from this end. So, there are uh, actually you will find that uh, you have to work with a lot of other engineers especially people from the chemical engineering side, mechanical engineering side, geologists, geophysicists, you know, they will give you all the inputs and some of the things also it is very difficult for you to comprehend at this stage. So, you start, so this is your uh, what is called your client requirement or, or what is called initial design, what I have stated here. or owner's requirement. So, you start from here. Now, owner actually uh, he will uh, give you some rough requirement because he is not ma making the platform, he is not making and remember um, these um, platforms or offshore field development, uh, there are number of stakeholders. say offshore, if you go here offshore field development, uh, you will find normally the fields as you read in the newspaper, the offshore fields are leased out to a party, you know. So, here actually the stakeholders you will find government is a major stakeholder. So, eventually it is the government of the country. Uh, under whose jurisdiction the platform lies, he actually dictates the terms. So, the first is the government. So, that is why whenever you venture into uh, offshore field, you have to satisfy a lot of government regulations, government requirement. Say the government will tell you that uh, they are giving certain uh, say uh, field, offshore field for exploitation, but they will require that you give me so many barrels per day of oil at this particular rate. Like uh, Reliance had a lot of trouble in the gas field in Godavari because there was a fight because of the pricing of the gas. So, normally you will find the price is, price is normally fixed or this is actually, this is where the whole point comes, price is normally, price of gas or oil 
that is the uh, output the from which you will get the money. So, that is normally fixed by the government. So, price of oil gas. So, that means you have to you cannot you have to operate within this limit. You have to find out the economics of the platform based on price of oil and gas as the government dictates. And also there may be a what is called uh, um, uh, resource sharing. There may be a resource sharing between your uh, contract uh, contractor and government or sometimes that uh, uh, resource sharing takes place between two governments you know. So, the, the contract is very price of oil and gas is fixed by government resource sharing. Number three is of course, you have to oblige certain international requirements. International what is called regulations, these have to be complied with because you will cause pollution in the uh, sea. So, that is not desirable. Uh, then the government regulations for that company, international regulations, then the last category is your uh, the contractor. So, these are the stakeholders coming into play. So, all these people have to be satisfied remember you. So, uh, before you uh, exploit a offshore field, you have to satisfy all these people. So, normally you see the bidding of the contract takes a long time, there are number of bids and all these things and eventually some price is fixed. And the, uh, the contract actually um, is the, the other part is the safety and insurance, this is a large cost, safety and insurance costs. So, this is also quite large. This is a, now your offshore platforms, you will find that the investment is the order of near the uh, nuclear plant because you are making some structure in the sea. And once you go for field development, you may have the see normally a field consists of field, offshore field consists of number of platforms. The, you look look the, uh, at the whole project in totality. Don't just uh, study one off platform. That is not the concept of field development. So you have to devise number of platforms. So number of platforms you have to figure out, configure, and some may take care of say these aspects, say drilling. There are some only production. The other may be uh, this accommodation, storage. Now, all these structures have to be built in the sea. So, that is where uh, it is not just like designing one cargo ship or a tanker. So, that philosophy does not hold good. So, here actually you have to look at the whole thing in its totality. Now, you start from where I see here this owner's requirement. So, owner's requirement when you start, so the, the your spider actually has number of spokes. So, I will give you what are these spokes. Now, the reason <coughs> why I am talking about this is uh, you will find that um, the structural design is an inherent part of the total design. So, you cannot segregate your structural design from the other aspects, your other aspects are also crucial. So, this is your case. Now, let us see how many spokes you are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 spokes. So, you start from here, spiral means it goes like this. So, after this you come here and then you can go on iterating. So, a spiral is a process of iteration of the various 
uh, design sequences. So, this is your first iteration is going in this manner. So, after this, the, this is just only one off design. So, you go inside the spiral, you come again here. So, this is actually called one loop, this is called a loop. So, you are going in this direction. So, you have you have actually made one loop and then again you enter the second loop. Your second loop is actually more refined than the first loop. So, here you go uh, second like this the number of iterations are categorized in loops in the design cycle. So, now ultimately you come right here and you end where you have started here. So, this is your finish point. Now, at this point is your final design. So, this uh, do not have any space to write. So, this you write. final design. So, you can see uh, this is a qu quite complex study and normally you have to have expert staff and expert personnel who can tackle all this. So, here you start from owner's requirement. Now, next you come what is called reservoir management. So, I told you you have to start from the field or reservoir. Now, after this you come to environmental criteria. Now, here you make drilling and well plans. Now, in the offshore field actually, now if you want to start your normally it is a experience based design you know. So, how you start designing an offshore jacket platform? So, uh, like you start in ships, you do the design spiral and you take a basic ship, is not it? Uh, of course, you have not started uh, learning about design. So, similar thing also will happen here, but how how do you select a basic uh, jacket platform? Say drilling and well plans, then you have facilities. Then you have platform designs. So, here actually it is not only one platform that you are designing, but various different types of platforms. Now, here you have offtake that is your gas and oil outflow that is called an offtake. And the last one is economics. So, as a naval architect, you also have to study some economics of this field. So, these are the uh, number of uh, uh, spokes that you are getting. So, owner's requirement, reservoir management, environment required drilling, well plans, facilities, platform design, oil and gas offtake and economics. So, you start with owner's requirement you start here and end in the final design. So, that is the thing that you will be coming here. Now, under this you have um, or uh, uh, so owner's requirement or uh, there is another thing which is uh, uh, external constraints out here.
but they should have given another spoke. Constants and uh, owner's requirement will come in the same spoke. So here you will find there are a lot of things you have to do prior to your design phase. Now in the external constraints you will find that is coming under the owner's requirement or governmental constraints. So what can be your constraints? Now any design you have to do, there will be some optimization with constraints. So optimization you have studied, no? Optimization, the, the linear optimization. So optimization of uh, various parameters, suppose they give you a ship, how you optimize? Either the constraint is the ship speed or what? speed is normally a constant or that is the minimum speed is the requirement. So constraints are your number one you will find government regulations. Now optimization I do not know, you, have you studied optimization? optimization uh, government regulations. So uh, optimization is actually either finding out the maximum or minimum of certain point giving rise to uh, certain constraints. So uh, this is, uh, uh, I do not know whether you have come across this concept of uh, linear programming. Linear programming have you done? So linear programming, I do not know whether but you should, uh, linear programming with multi criteria constraints. Now as a designer, this is a um, you cannot bypass this. So the design optimization. Yes, I am uh, talking here. Uh, my specialization is not in this uh, uh, design optimization. Where you come across all these things. So that means in this. Uh, many a design class professor will tell you more about this. So government regulations, what is your company policy? Now a <coughs> single contractor may not be there. Normally in offshore you have multiple vendors, is not it? So what are the requirements of these companies or company policy goals? So your interest that one not usually what happens the goal of one company will clash with the requirement of another company. So you will be at loggerheads. So how to resolve all these issues? So government the contractor will want obviously you want the maximum price because he wants to maximize profit but the government will also try to take away the maximum share is not it from the field. So that means the two parties are at uh, cross purpose. So how to settle disputes? So company policy goals, three is dispute resolutions. There should be a mechanism who can or arbitration which, which can resolve all your disputes. An arbitration mechanism then you have to follow the industrial design codes. I will tell you what some of the codes, industrial design codes. So all these 
comes under external uh, constraints. Now, some dispute has come and the dispute resolution will tell you that we agree upon this barrels of oil output constraint, you cannot neither produce less nor more. So, that is the situation. Now, next is uh, your reservoir management. So, actually our platform starts from the basic reservoir definition or that is called the oil reservoir. So, here if you go into the oil field, so this uh, once you are in the design, so obviously you have to do all this uh, programming and all these things, the other as soon as you come back, then you have to do all your management, management of what are you going to manage. First you start from the reserve that is mapping and reserve oil reserve estimates. Now, based on this that is your production rate is decided upon and based again on your production rate that is the equipment, the size of the equipment, the nature of the equipment have to be decided. Now, once you decide upon in the uh, equipment, I told you the, all these are basically um, deck type of configuration, deck design, you start from the deck design. So, structural engineering starts from that. So, again you have to go to the root of the problem is your reservoir. So, you are getting oil from this. So, this is normally done by your geophysical survey. So, all this is uh, done by the survey, well tests and fluid properties. Now, you have to do a lot of modeling. Modeling means computer modeling, modeling schemes, schemes or scenarios. Then you have your where you are going to pierce the well. Now, oil field, I think in, I have told you it is like this you have a capping or that is it is under a dome where you have the gas. You have in this gas oil and below the oil you may have water. So, there is a uh, capping sort of capping comes like this. Now, all this is done by the um, uh, geoph geophysicist. So, bottom hole locations. Now, in the drilling, while you are drilling, so that is the top rock has to be pierced at a certain depth. Now, where you are going to pierce, either if you want to take out the oil, which one is the most advantageous location, either at the top or here or here, because you have to come from different layers of soil and all these layers of soil may not be feasible to your drilling. You have huge, very hard rock then that is going to bend your drill string or drill pipe, not feasible, is not it. So, then again you have to explore, you come again uh, away from here, you, you see that this may be the region where you can pierce the rock. So, uh, all this survey work has to be done. So, nowadays actually this geophysical survey, geophysical and geological survey, these are actually based on geophysical and geological survey. This is quite crucial. So, you have to work with these people. Now, after uh, you have located the holes, then you the, the other part is your environmental criteria. So, you can see the problems are uh, pretty vast. 
it is almost similar to designing some kind of a nuclear platform environmental criteria so under this category you have the meteorology da data then you have oceanography but actually the here the meteorologic means above the water that is normally the temperature and the wind data now you have oceanographic data next you have geotechnical in the last one you have biological this environmental data acquisition is a must so meteorologic is air basically it is wind then the heat from the sun solar these are the two most crucial rain of course will be there but that is not that crucial oceanographic waves currents What is geotechnical? Soil. Then you have earthquakes. Now, what is this biological data? Biological criteria. Biological criteria is marine growth. This is called barnacles. Now there may be vegetation, lot of vegetation on the seabed, but you know, just you have to plant your, you study your offshore structure. So those have to be got rid of, and these you study because of the major aspect is their corrosive structure, corrosion problems. marine corrosion is very critical so these have to be configured next is drilling and well plans <coughs> now this you have to sit with the uh, chemical engineer and the geo geo geologist Casing or mining people. So, here you have casing sizing. Then you have directional design. So nowadays you can drill number of wells from a single wellhead by slanted drilling. You know you can pierce those holes by means of slanting drilling like this, drill pipes or drill strings. Now what three is rig selection. The last is how you complete the well that is called work over. So now these are your drilling and well plans, then the other is your facilities requirements.
So, facilities is very crucial because, so this is the, the drilling and well plants. So, these are happening below the on the seabed. Okay. Now, here these facilities are your deck facilities. So, these are actually situated on the deck. So, number one you have oil and gas processing facilities. Number two is injection of gas into the well. Now, why that is done is in order to build up the pressure. So, if, if the uh, reservoir is depleted, then you inject gas. Now, on the deck you have accommodation. So, these are your deck facilities. platforms the last, next is the more crucial with which normally you will be associated so platform design now here actually what you have to decide is which what type of jacket Uh, jackets you have seen it is not one type here you can find out your yeah, yeah, class okay so here actually this is one type of jacket i am not drawing so this is the most more conventional category so here you have the long columns and you have different you can see skirt piles that is each of these legs are skirt pile driven and then it is all these files they go beneath the uh, seabed and is fixed to the seabed. Now, another type of jacket uh, somewhere is here, there is slightly wider base, but you can say the base is, is slightly wider, but this is more rectangular. So, here they call it the seabed footprint. So, the seabed footprint is of the rectangular category and in this picture you can see in the uh, oil field, you do not have only one jacket. So, this jacket is probably here, as you can see it may be a drilling or a production platform or it can do only drilling. Here you have another production and this is the accommodation jacket. You may have another platform which may be solely firing the gas that is called a flare structure. So, you can see when you develop a oil field, you have to take into consideration of all these platforms and these are all connected by seabed pipelines. So, pipelining is a very crucial part of offshore engineering. So, here this is one type of plus, uh, platform that you can see. The other type is called a extended, say here the large. So, this is probably in the Gulf of Mexico jacket. You can see it is a very tall structure and you can see the number of piles is all around the periphery of the jacket. So, uh, so this is actually a very crucial in your uh, structural engineering work. What you have to do, we have to start with the foundation mechanics. Now, here you decide what type of structure you are going to do, how, how many piles you are going to select and all these things. And sometimes the most, uh, the loads that are coming is your wave load is coming at the top, current will be there. So, the large part of the wave load is giving rise to your toppling moment. So, there is a side shift or lateral shift to the along with the toppling moment. Now, the problem is uh, uh, water, the water depth is a very important criteria. Why? Because of the moment arm. So, unnecessarily if you increase the moment arm, you will find the toppling moment is also quite large. Uh, so, now what you do in order to resist this, uh, you have to make increase the stiffness of the underwater truss. So, you have to make this strong <coughs> and the usual uh, this thing option is to increase the thickness of these, increase the diameter of all these columns. Ah. So, if you increase the diameters, it will be stronger, but the problem that you will have is out in the at the surface where you have the wave loads, there will be a lot of diffraction loads will come 
because of increase in member sizes. So again, the whole thing is going to increase. That is the topping moment is also going to increase. So now you have, so this, uh, this is a uh, so offshore structure design. You have to be thorough on the hydrodynamics aspect. As you are dealing you know, the waves in the sea, how to make the trans, uh, truck structure transparent to the waves. You have to make it transparent. Otherwise, the problem is you will have large amount of you know, overturning moment. So, this is the ground reaction that is coming and your reaction is normally the resisting moment is coming from the seabed. So, you have to play around with the configuration of the base of the structure. Now, base you can see you can either go for this uh, rectangular base or a square base or sometimes they have another base you can find that is called a extended base extended base platform. So, here the I think they do not have the I will show you the picture of a extended base. Now, they are actually the structure is completely redesigned you know the underwater part because um, uh, of the large base. Anyway, so the base itself is a separate truss you will find the thing is like this. So, this is your normal jacket that uh, the diagram is not coming out. You make it rectangular and here is the deck. So, you build a truss like this. Now, this is actually situated on another truss like this. It is a huge structure. So, this is called a extended base platform. So, the reason is because of if you give a ex extended base, then the resisting lever is more. Your resisting lever will be somewhere in this region. If you want to topple the structure about one end, so, your resisting lever arm will be more, you increase the resist. So, all kinds of uh, configurations you have to play around with. So, this is literally, literally a truss on a truss. So, th this is another structural engineering configuration. So, wide base, extended base platform. Now, the uh, thing that I want to tell you is that now all this are you have to think about the feasibility studies of these platforms. How much money you are going to invest, whether you want a large jacket type of structure or now in case of marginal fields where there is not much oil in the reservoir then is it uh, feasible for this type of huge structure to be commissioned. So, marginal fields will require smaller jackets or smaller or leaner jackets. That means, you try to reduce the structure size because that will cut down your cost. So, all kinds of options you come across this whenever I uh, think um, the extended base is uh, last one anyway. So, it is not here. So, that is your uh, the other is your this in your bracing configurations. You can have different bracing configurations. You can see normally these are the X bracings and these are called the diagonal bracings or K bracings. So, this will come back later. So, anyway for this matter you have to just let me finish what I am doing out here. We have the design spiral. So, 
this is just an example. So, drilling and well plants, the other is your processing facilities. Yeah. So, facilities you decide based on your platform. Platforms is type of jackets that I have told you. Uh, first is jacket type, then you can also think about gravity platforms. Then compliant structures. So, if you find that that uh, you are not getting sufficient oil production from the well or from the reservoir, you try to abandon jacket project. You go for this compliant structure. Then it is your floating. Floating structure or not. So, that means we, if you find that the cost is prohibitive for a jacket structure and you are not getting sufficient oil, you this is sequentially he is going down to the floating category. Then, of course, the last is your subsea template. So, these are the platform considerations which you have to take, then the other one is off take. Off take you have metering. Then you have pipelining. Then you have tanker storage. or you may have shuttle tanker. So, which one you have to decide? So, whether the output you can store or you can push it to shore facility. So, that is uh, deciding and the last one is economics. So, those of you who are going in for the management part, you can see if you are in an offshore company, the amount of risk involved is very high. So, that itself is a management challenge. So, first one is the primary driver is cost. Cost is the most important criteria because the offshore field is going to cost to billions of dollars. So, who is going to foot the bill? Now, next is the most crucial is scheduling. This is also very crucial in your shipbuilding. So, when I was in the shipyard, so we used to make a schedule or a production schedule you have to make. So, normally that is done in by the easiest one is a bar chart. Say this is your uh, say uh, steel, say steel plates are coming, you are acquiring steel say month of January to June. So, then you have hulls of fabrication will start from here, go like this. So, when you go your, to your design office, so this is hull fabrication. You have to make a bar chart like this. So, this is called scheduling. In shipyards, you go for training, you will see this thing they are done. So, there are a number of you have to split your normally your shipbuilding or fabrication. Shipbuilding is normally split up into various uh, options. 
uh, various uh, length of times, time runs. Then you have this maybe your launching. Now this is your job, remember that. So you have to say here somewhere here you will find this the actually kidling it all starts from the kidling. So right from kidling to say kidling to delivery of the ship you have to make this kind of flow chart or bar chart. I think they call it a bar chart. So this is called scheduling. So scheduling is a very important part of uh, the fabrication or shipbuilding process. Now here you have the other part. So economics is uh, scheduling, then risk. <coughs> risk calculation. Whether this a uh, huge amount of money is at all justified or not. So that is based on risk of failure. Is because of environmental loads, then you have pipeline, snap, fire, etc. And this risk is covered by the insurance companies. Then project, project strategy. So, what strategy? we are going to use because there are a number of contractors or vendors who will be working there simultaneously. So you have to formulate a strategy of completion of the project. So that of course that is your, uh, the last one is operating plan. That is after you have completed the installation phase, then the operation phase. So all these are, so this brings us to the end of the design spiral and the spokes. Uh, since we have not much time, the other part is uh, we will talk this about later. I think one more class, one or two more class before we go for the detailed design, structural design. Okay, thank you.